Colin, mm. I heard you had a question or two. I did, I did. I'm <laughs> just pulling it up now. All right, Actually, so it's a question from a viewer. Let me welcome these viewers and our listeners yeah, to so another nice. Creative Spin podcast. Today we have Colin. He ran away from being behind the camera, and now he's right here sitting in front of me because we have some questions from our viewers. And uh, since you're always digging in and trying to figure out what, uh, what people are saying, you got a couple of questions there for us to see uh, if we can answer or at least give our opinion on. Today's podcast is brought to you by Workplace One, a company offering boutique private offices, co-working spaces, virtual office solutions, and meeting rooms. Amazing spaces in the best neighborhoods in Toronto and Kitchener-Waterloo. Ideal for entrepreneurs, companies, and passionate business people. These spaces provide a stimulating environment to build, network, and drive business. With five different locations in Toronto and one in Kitchener, Workplace One is definitely where you want to be with your business. For more information, just uh, jump over to their website at workplaceone.com. Yeah, so um, basically today we'll be taking a question from Gabriel Alvarez. I hope I'm saying that right. Yeah. Okay. And the question is, so we reached out to him after he had left a comment and he, we asked, are there any topics you'd like to see? And this was his reply. Yeah, staying on the topic of social media, I think it would be interesting for a lot of people to perhaps understand the advantages or disadvantages of the different social media platforms. Does it make sense to be on all of them? Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, etc. For example, I'm on YouTube and that is my main focus, but I also use Twitter to connect with interesting people and even use that to push out my content. At the same time, I'm also on Instagram and tried to do the same there, but that I'm doing on Twitter, but just failed miserably. Mm. Now I'm only using Instagram to get my daily dose of memes. See, <laughs> I, would I would like to know why he's saying failed miserably. I don't think you can fail miserably if you're putting out content and if you're, if you're engaging with people. Yeah, <coughs> I think that what you said there is is crucial the engagement part what i'm seeing a yeah. lot on social media especially when people are saying like oh it's not working or this or that like it's awesome to be posting but on top of that you actually have to be going out there and so getting much. the conversation going yeah so much i mean we've we've decided to to really hone in on on that aspect of, of our social media um and and comment i mean this is a perfect example uh he interacted with us we responded there was another interaction and and here's a topic for a exactly. podcast yeah <coughs> sorry my throat is going <laughs> because of this busy day of podcast man your voice no, is we just finished one and yeah. we're doing a second one but i think it's more the air conditioning than anything yeah, else I, it's it's like my crypt tonight oh, yeah. um but uh, going back to, to what to do in social media is I think you're, you're right. It's not just about posting. I think even interacting is, is got almost as much weight on a successful platform. Oh, 100%. Than the post itself. Yeah. And because people want or, or they, they like to have that feedback, yeah. right? 100%. I think that that's something that like we noticed with, yeah. uh, with the sort of thing that we're doing right now, especially on YouTube, our uh, upload schedule is once a week. We have the podcast coming out every Tuesday. But on top of that, we're on the platform every single day. The moment yeah. someone comments on any of our videos, sends us a DM, whatever it be, we're there, the conversation's going. And I think that's crucial because people are seeing that and people are noticing the fact that no matter what, no matter when, we'll be engaging with them. And I think it's super important because that's what people are looking for, especially on these different platforms in these different quote unquote influencers. I'm saying influencers <laughs> as the, the form of saying creator. I think creator is actually a better way of yeah, saying I it. Yeah, I think so. I because think so. I, I don't believe that in any way we're trying to be influencers. We're creators for the fact that we want to be sharing a message that that we believe in and that we think is key to what we do in our day-to-day -day life. Yeah, I think the word influencers uh, has, uh, unfortunately, uh, has gotten into this darker side of the word because of yeah. all of the crap that's been going on yeah. with a lot of people that abuse the, the, the whole yeah. system, right? Uh, I still believe that there are influencers. Oh, yeah. People of influence, yeah. right? Uh, if you're an expert in, um, I don't know, in ath athletics and, and or you're a trainer, your expertise is on that subject. Yeah, you're an influencer. Yeah. If you have a lot of people following you that like that subject, 
if you say something, they will listen. You know, that type, that's where, what I, where I go with influencers. Now, when you're an quote unquote, and yeah, here yeah. are the quotes, <laughs> <laughs> an influencer because you have 50,000 or 100,000 yeah. followers or a million followers. Okay, followers of what? Exactly. What is your influence yeah. though, right? Yeah. You need to align those two things. And I think the, the reason why the word influencer has kind of broken down a little bit is because a lot of people that have a million followers on a photography website yeah. uh, or, um, or that they talk about photography, sorry, uh, they try to be an influencer for food. Yeah, it doesn't work. Yes, unless they're talking about photography or food. Yeah. But it doesn't work, right? And I think that's where things gone wrong. Now, we kind of diverged a little yeah. bit. Going back to where you should put your attention and which platform, I think that is a question that you, you need to ask yourself. Yeah. Because every single platform works a little bit different. Yeah. Uh, from YouTube, which is more of a video, obviously. Uh, you've got your Instagram, where it's, it's pi picture and, and video based, right? It's a visual platform as well. So what are you trying, what's the message that you personally are trying to put out, right? Is I, it going to work well with the visual? Then you got those two. Yeah, I think that like one of the, the key parts with that is every social media is a bit different. So in that sense, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you're, you're holding the same brand. So that means that you're representing the same brand on every platform. So that doesn't mean that each platform you should be branding differently. It's just how you're making those posts. Yeah. At the end of the day, you still want to have that unified message of your company or whatever, your YouTube channel, whatever you're representing, you still want to have that unified image but it's about targeting the audiences that are on each platform specifically so 100 like what we were talking about facebook it has that older demographic mm -hmm. compared to instagram are you calling me old like, are you calling me old man okay I'm sorry. No, no, I'm not. <laughs> no but all no, of us true, right? true. like you know what i mean in that sense that yeah. facebook does hold that that sort of audience that isn't looking for those like quick like meme provoking like fast images that you're seeing on other platforms like exactly instagram. because i mean if you think about it uh facebook linkedin instagram youtube these are all platforms that can take video and even twitter as well yeah. uh but every single one of them has a different kind of audience exactly i mean some of them will bleed into each other right yeah. but you're looking at uh older demographic in photo in, in facebook mm -hmm. business on linkedin more of a younger demographic on, on Instagram and probably a little bit younger as well on, on YouTube, yeah. right? So you need to cater yourself yeah. towards those audiences. So, but now it comes down to each and every person has is, is got a different goal, right? Like if you're selling a product that is geared towards an older demographic, so now you have to pay a little bit more attention yeah. to the older demographic platform. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that you should completely disregard the other ones because you just never know and my example is always like this like if if i see uh well, if i watch a video that might not particularly be um about something i i really like but i just saw it and i i retained that information but then my dad comes along and he says you know i was looking for this guy or, or somebody to fix this or to do that i can only say hey you know what i i remember seeing this guy yeah here's a referral, just go check him out and then you can contact. So there's always that little bit of a, of a bleed between the, the platforms yeah. that you can take advantage of, right? Exactly. And like one of the most crucial things I, ter I think in terms of going back to what Gabriel was saying, if we have any specific strategies, I think one of the main things is you have to be producing noise. And I think that that needs to be almost on a like good noise, good noise, but consistent, noise. consistent. And like every day, what we've noticed on Instagram, for example, is I would say like uh, three, four months ago, we were posting, I think it was two to three times a week. Mm -hmm. And like our audience was there, we were getting good feedback, but our growth was like, it wasn't- We were there. We were there, and it, but the growth was like, in terms of like growing we were, but at a smaller rate. Yep. Then we picked up, we started doing daily. Yeah. And we were putting and out interacting with people. Exactly. That's another thing that we added where we we really wanted to understand what our audience was coming from. And I think yeah. that one of the main things is that most people are going into social media and being like, you know what? It's all about me and I'm producing the content. I'm getting out there. I'm doing this. But at the end of the day, it's really the only way that you'll succeed on yeah. social media 
is through your audience and you need to always remember the fact. Yeah. My one, like an advice that I, I, I would put out there is like, if you are posting something, make sure that, you know, especially that first hour that you've posted something is crucial because that's when, you know, that's where, when the attention is still on that post, yeah. right. Um, you know, algorithms, obviously they, they'll show it whenever they want to whomever they want, but you still know that within that first hour of the post, that's, that's, probably the best window for you to start interacting with people Definitely. so m that's one of the tips is like if you're and this doesn't matter where you're posting whenever you're posting it start interacting with people right there and then at least for about an hour half an hour an hour and i know that sometimes that that, that you know might not be possible yeah. but you need to figure out a way of doing exactly. it because if this is the thing if you're complaining that you're not getting the attention that you're not getting the the awareness to your brand or to your product or company well you got to find solutions. It, it won't just happen because you want it to happen. That's you need thing. to put in yeah. the work. So uh, if during the day it doesn't work for you, then you know what? Sometimes uh, posting it in the evening when you're home and you have nothing, uh, quote unquote, nothing to do, but you can be at least on your phone and just writing some, some comments and, and interacting with people, then do it at night. Yeah. You know, do it first thing in the morning. Do it before you start. Like, you have to find your time to make it work. 100%. And uh, another thing that I think that a lot of people are, are scared of is kind of posting the same content multiple times. And, yeah. and I don't mean that by, like, literally carbon copying your image and posting it to another platform or twice or whatever, this or that. Mm -hmm. no, 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 I'm a completely against that. But the fact of the matter is, if you're recording a video right there you've got audio you've got video you've got photo and then on top of that each of those can be like subsection in. yeah. into even further pieces yeah. so like like what we're doing here we're recording one podcast we're taking up the time to record this but people will be seeing this on facebook instagram twitter linkedin our website <laughs> our blog yeah in Everywhere. multiple like pieces over the next few weeks yeah and i think that's super important that on top of us just producing content you have to realize that whoever is on social media is doing the same thing yeah so the noise right now is insane there is everyone's like if you look at your instagram feed you can't it's scroll crazy. down to the morning yeah like when you woke up and you checked instagram you won't see that post ever again it's even true. though it was only a few hours so it's ago. fine to repeat you know it's sometimes the picture let's say uh, you can go in and crop it a little bit differently or or just you know touch it up a little bit differently and just write something a little bit different than the first time you've used exactly. it and just repeat it because what's going to happen is in a lot of cases, people didn't see your first post. Yeah. And the biggest misconception that I, I think uh, is out there is people, oh, I posted something and everybody's going to see it. Nobody's going to see it. I'm those days are over. Those <laughs> days are gone. I think that it's something crazy like six to seven percent oh, yeah. of the people that follow you yeah. are actually going to see the post that you put out. Yeah. This is crazy people, but yeah. this is the reality of things. Yeah. You know, these are companies. Facebook is a company. Instagram yeah. is a company owned by the same people. Uh, <laughs> you know, they're all companies yeah. and they they're here to make money themselves. Yeah. You think they were going to just keep giving you things for free? No, they're not. So if you want to reach more people, guess what? You're going to have to pay for that. You're going to have to boost your posts. Well, if you have a business, it might make sense. If you don't have a business, it might not make any sense for you to do that. I don't know why you would want to do that. But then again, <laughs> people <laughs> want to share their images of their cats and food, man. <laughs> Listen, everybody has their own thing. But uh, make sure that if you do have a business and you are posting something, don't be afraid to post three times a day, five times a yeah. day. If you can, 10 times a day, do it. Yeah. Don't be afraid to say, oh, people are going to get so pissed off at l watching or going through all of my content. Mm, no, they're not going to see no. it. Trust me, yeah. they're not going to see it. So put as much as you can out there. That's my advice. Put it in as many platforms as you can. That's another piece of advice. My analogy, the one I love to use is, let's say you're, you have your little boat. Mm -hmm. That's your phone. And you yeah. go into a little lake and you're going fishing. Right. Yeah. And the lake is full of fishes mm -hmm. and that's your audience right there. Yeah. If you go in with one rod, you're going to catch a fish at a time. Yeah. Go in with 20 rods. You're going to get more fish. Yeah, get that's the whole net in there. <laughs> get a whole net. Yeah. You know, get some sticks of that. No, no, no don't do that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, Peter calling us. <laughs> <laughs> no, but 
my the, the analogy is really it comes down to the more places you're at the more more noise good noise exactly. you do the more chances of you being picked up there is yeah i just noticed i kept this recording for all this time this is going to be yeah. such a humongous file it's going to take like three years to save and to watch yeah I, I wonder that's one thing that we could actually ask our audience how do you guys uh how are you liking the uh 360 footage we're trying to incorporate yeah. it more and more into the podcast here hopefully and there. hopefully hopefully, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> we'll see it as it comes but yeah no. we're, we're trying it's a new toy uh yeah. and, and you know uh, it's something that we always love to do is try different things exactly and technologies here uh why not just abuse of it and and just use as much as we can exactly all right i think we're done with this one uh that was a good uh a good topic um, yeah thank you gabriel for coming through with that absolutely question. and um, uh for everybody else that is watching our content on i don't care where <laughs> <laughs> just leave us comments because yeah. we'll find we'll find you yeah we will find you and we will read your comments oh. and we will bring them to the podcast. And I exactly. think that, that will become the, the more interactive part of our, uh, of our podcast is to be able to communicate. Yeah. And this is, this is actually a, a, a louder part of engaging with the, with exactly. the audience. Right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's tying back to what we were talking about. This exactly. Time. So Colin, thank you for coming out, you know, putting yourself in front of the camera this time. I appreciate it. I love yeah. being in the spotlight, man. There you go. <laughs> oh, there might be more episodes <laughs> like this. I, I can sense it. <laughs> All right. Thank you, sir. And we're off to the next one.